amazing. Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to this edition of Woo Woo Wednesday. I am so excited to have our guest on today, Andrew McElrath, who is a biofield tuner, uh, was somebody that I met through a Facebook group that I'm part of, having been a biofield tuning foundation student. And yeah, I just invited Andrew here today to share with all of you what he does as a biofield tuner, um, a little bit about what it is, so we'll just get right into it. Thank you so much, Andrew, for being here. Hi there. Thank you so much for having me on, Jill. It's always a great opportunity to communicate with a broader audience and, and sort of let people know ways to support them um, in their roles of service, because I know that's really important right now. Yeah, super important. And I just want to say for the record, this is the first time Andrew and I have actually seen one another in person. Andrew has tuned me a few times, but we usually do it over the phone, so we never get to like see each other. So this is a very cool moment for the two of us. So, awesome. so tell me, like, how did you find biofield tuning? How'd you get into it? All that stuff. Yes, absolutely. So, um, you know, I was on the path of working with, um, you know, holistic modalities. So I had already had a, a bit of a background in hypnosis. I worked with a specific form of hypnosis called quantum healing hypnosis therapy developed by Dolores Cannon. And I had received a session. And in that session, I got the guidance that I would be working with sound. And at the time, I thought, okay, well, you know, hypnosis, sound, sound of my voice. Okay, that, that, that kind of fits in there. Well, later on, uh, this is probably around 2015, um, you know, I was doing research on solfeggio frequencies and the way that sound works in a healing context. And I came across this video of the developer and founder of the modality, Eileen McCusick, and immediately I knew... I needed to learn this modality. It was very clear to me, you, you know, you, you, sometimes your higher knowing drops in and goes, you have to do this. So, uh, so I did. And uh, it was uh, extraordinary. Um, I think a lot of people that are drawn to the work have that kind of knowing or a deeper sense that, oh, this is something I need to do. So I went for my first class in 2015 and it, huge things shifted, huge things for me that um, were sort of outside my cognitive awareness around patterns and, and really deep things moved. And so after that happened, uh, I just kept on going. And then I think in between at that time, there were three sequence of courses. So um, I was then certified in June of 2016. And then it's been a pretty consistent uh, practice since then. So I, you know, I think back and I've been tuning for almost five years now. Yeah. So, um, and just briefly, oh, the overview. So I, Eileen had been doing massage therapy for about 20 years and she started to work with these tuning forks and uh, she would notice when she would work with folks outside around the body that she would find, you know, she'd hold the fork, strike the fork, and then she'd notice that there was a quality of the tone and she could feel into sort of the emotion or the sense of what's there. And if she would hang out in that space and, and communicate with her client, that that would change the tone and the quality would actually move and she could adjust it and shift it into alignment. And that people were having these really interesting, profound results from those experiences. So over time, you know, that just turned into, you know, folks asking for that tuning, the thing that she does with the forks. So the theory is, because at this point it is theoretical, however, um, you know, over 2,000 people have been trained worldwide, at least on a foundations level around the modality. So there's actually, there is something going on, but her theory is that we are all emitting light in the form of biophotons that surround our field. And it, it, traditionally, when we learn about matter, we learn about gas, fluid, and then, you know, solids. Well, you know, there's plasma also, if you go the other way after gas, and then beyond that is ether. Um, and so that's kind of outside of what we're taught, but actually that information is really ancient in a lot of traditions. So the idea is that these 
biophotons that our biological body is emitting, and, and the geometry of that actually looks like a, a torsion field. So if you could imagine a donut that's going around, and that there's information in there. So when life happens to us, that, that there are pockets of static that hang out in that subtle field around our body. And that these tuning forks are able to emit overtones, undertones, and actually have an effect on an electromagnetic level in those spaces. So, um, what, and when people are learning tuning or they're doing tuning, um, we're, we move into a really highly receptive state. Um, Eileen Blake's call that a, a hollow bone. And we can, to feel into that and get really uh, aware and present to notice what's there. And um, over time, um, at least for me personally, I think my body's just become very accustomed and trained to receiving the information that's there. And we call it, you know, um, we, we use the language very openly and broadly as information because, um, you know, it, it, the idea is that all of that's there. It's kind of like your own personal Akashic record, if you will. Um, and so I just kind of notice what's there. We can't really remove what happened um, in those records, right? We can't go back and say, oh, yeah, that didn't happen at five. But what we can do is make space for that to become integrated. So over time, Eileen developed a biofield anatomy match which is a guide for people to use. You know, I find all kinds of information in the field and just allow it to sort of drop in. And um, in some ways I kind of get out of my headspace to sort of allow that to drop in. And the idea is that when we allow those subconscious patterns, because in my observation, those are all patterns to some degree um, that have an origin. When we identify those on a, uh, on a conscious level, the subconscious becomes conscious and then that integration and healing allows, you know, it, it makes space for it to occur. So sort of like when you are um, communicating a challenge to someone that's supporting you, whether that's a counselor or a friend or whomever, that they are witnessing and expressing empathy to your experience, you know, in my, my feeling is that all healing is a form of self-healing, that we all consent to that to happen. And so that, that, that role of someone reflecting something back to you and allowing for that subconscious or unconscious pattern to now become, you becoming aware of it and noticing it and also maybe stepping out of the experience of being in it, right? Because someone's able to come in and say, hey, this is happening, I'm hearing this, I'm getting this, and having a dialogue about it allows it to integrate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can 100% concur with that. Awesome. So what, what does a session look like? What types of things do people come to see you for? Yeah, so it's really pretty broad. So sometimes people will have gone through different modalities, whether they're allopathic or however that has shown up for them. Um, sometimes they're just open to it and they want to approach it from a holistic standpoint. And that those can range from, um, you know, physical symptoms or emotional symptoms and things like that. And, you know, we really try to approach it not necessarily Enter, entering it from that place of symptom-based approach. It's sort of like, let's just see what shows up. So you can you can go in with an intention, um, but you, more often than not, I will use a pendulum to sort of see where energy is not moving. Um, and we use the seven chakra system, or you could call those nerve plexuses. That's probably a more um, ag agnostic sign of kind of language for it. But um, and, and I also want to say that my sense is that this process is actually has a cross-cultural overlay. It, it, in many ways, it feels like it can intersects with a lot of other traditions um, outside of what we now call biofield tuning. But um, so people will come in and my, my process with them is pretty quick. I don't do extensive intake because I'm actually more interested in what's showing up there because sometimes we get stuck in the story of what we self-identify with a symptom. 
and say, oh, well, this is mine. Or if someone's dealing with a health challenge for a long time, it really integrates into them. So I, I usually ask people, what are you noticing in your body that's showing up today? So in my experience, the body always tells the truth. It really can't lie. And so uh, I just kind of hear what's there. And I think immediately when I start communicating with someone in person, I'm starting to tune in, no pun intended, or key into what's dropping in to my awareness around it. And then um, the the first part of the process, and, the, and in, you know, this would be if someone was in for an in-person session. Um, I do a lot of my work distance, and I'm going to explain how that works in a little bit. But so someone would come in on a treatment table, and the very first thing that we do is connect with what we call their earth star chakras. So this generally lives about eight to 12 inches below the feet. And if you can imagine that your body is an electromagnetic system and that you, you need to anchor that negative terminal on the battery that's the body, because if you talk to anyone that's an electrician, they're going to tell you you need to have that grounded for it to work and to be safe. So we get that settled in and there's all kinds of information in that, in that space. Um, I notice where people are plugging into someone's signal to feel grounded. I'll sometimes notice what's going on in their close relationships around family members, or if there's really immediate emotion that's coming up, um, that can show up. And also strangely enough, when uh, pets are, anchoring the individual um, that can often show up. Um, so just a whole bunch of information. So we do a little adjustment to, to ground that in. And sometimes people are very sensitive and will pick up, they'll have tingles or they'll feel a sense of energy moving in the body, you know, in that first uh, part of the process. And then what we'll do is we'll connect their sun star. So that's the positive terminal up above. And ideally what we're doing is connecting that flow between the energy up above or in the sun down through the body into the earth. And you, the, another piece of language that you could use is this actually, actually kind of the flow of prana or chi within the body. And we're really allowing that to open up. And when that channel opens up and that flow is really initiated in a really beautiful way, the rest of the parts of the process become a little easier because you're making subtle adjustments or you're inviting a shift to happen. And that flow kind of just allows it all to happen because ideally we have a hundred percent of light coming in and then we have a hundred percent coming out. But sometimes what happens is are the circuits our emotional electromagnetic circuits get, you know, broken. And what, we, what we're doing in the process is allow, bringing things together and allowing some of those circuits to come back into repair. So ideally there's 100% in and 100% out. Um, that's an ideal state. You'll notice that when people are running really heavy stories or really un, deep unresolved emotions or patterns, um, that their that flow is leaking out. You know, they're, we're, you know when, when we're running a, uh, a story of unresolved emotion. We're leaking our own energy. We're leaking our own light. So that's kind of a, that kind of covered the, the bigger picture of what's going on. I would say, okay, so within a session, how it would then work is, you know, I go in with a pendulum or practitioners go in with a pendulum usually and just identify where things are not moving. And that's generally guides us to where we're going to go. Again, that biofield anatomy up is a guide. Um, I have kind of opened it up to just see what shows up. And it's very much uh, a conversation and a back and forth with the individual on the table. So um, it, because when we find pockets that are stuck or there's a lot of resistance, just processing the emotion, inviting new possibility in there, kind of working with folks to loosen up that space and then allowing it to be integrated and moved to the center. So we're kind of, I, 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 the language I'm starting to use is that I feel like I'm an emotional electrician in some ways. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah, I 100% I agree. Um, and obviously, you know, I've been lucky enough to experience these sessions and I understand how to do them. Um, 
Yeah. So what, um, from your perspective, like what do your clients say to you after a session? What is, how do they feel when they're done? Yeah. So yeah, overwhelmingly people feel lighter. Um, you know, the kinds of information and patterns that are in there can be all over the map for people. So sometimes if people have been, um, a really, uh, something has been really pushed back or under wraps. So say that, um, that's pretty common for all of us to have heard or felt at some point, particularly if we're really expressive to calm down and push that down and meet the world in the place that they're at. And that might be kind of a repressed contained state. Well, if you're a rather gregarious person and have a lot of energy or feel very strongly about things and you've been asked or taught to push that down, um, when we release that, sometimes there's a huge burst of energy. People are like, oh my gosh, I did this, I did that. They, they notice after the fact that there's all kinds of movement, things open up. Um, and then on the other side of that picture, um, you know, say that someone's in overdrive all the time and they're showing up in almost not a manic state, but um, uh, on, on kind of high alert in the world and on all the time. Um, when that gets witnessed and maybe there's a pattern that goes back a little farther, um, that can tend to uh, regulate, down regulate, and then sometimes people crash and burn. And they, and, and I mean that respectfully and compassionately because, you know, that means sometimes a big rest. Sometimes that means that people are, um, need to acknowledge the broader ramifications and impacts to them and their lives in being in overdrive for a long time. Um, and those are just a couple examples. Um, you know, if you look at the biofield anatomy map, there's a lot of real interesting information, like on the left side of the heart is where depression, grief, and loss kind of hang out. On the right side is where there, I call it the codependent zone. When you're saying yes, but you really mean no. So there's a sense of being overextended. Well, one of the things that I notice about the sort of patterns of cardiac function there is that that left side tends to be more of a depressed, sort of more of a state of atrophy. And then the right side is just this hyper exaggerated manic um, quality and, and that can actually show up in patterns. And again, I want to be clear, you know, we're, we're not treating, diagnosing or, or, you know, doing anything in that capacity. However, you know, how I see this is I'm feeling into these patterns or noticing these patterns that over time can show up in the physical body because in, in my line of work or in this line of work, um, Everything that shows up in the body has an emotional uh, pattern to it, right? That, and, and I think that's really important. You know, I, um, I got an Associates of Applied Science in Complementary Alternative Medicine in, botanical, in Botanicals and Herbs, and I noticed even in that language, right, um, it's, it's, it's uh, kind of set up to set that aside. And I understand the reasoning for that, but I think I was just thinking about it the other night. I, I think the language that I really want to continue to anchor in is holistic, right? That we really need to integrate those side by side rather than having this weird back and forth between them. So that um, ideally, uh, you know, I can have a conversation with the individual and work with these patterns along with whatever is going on because um, yeah, sometimes people will show up to a holistic practitioner because they've exhausted all the other options that are out there. And I would prefer to see those happening together or, you know, have a different relationship between the two of them. I kind of went off there a little bit, but that's just kind of what I noticed in the work, you know, um, Interestingly enough, my, my original training is in um, fine art. So I studied textile design for um, my undergraduate. So I realized that I'm used to looking and sensing patterns, visual patterns. And that for me, when I'm working with the client, I'm trying to feel into and detect what the pattern is, where it started, 
And some of the information that I'll find in the field is pretty um, big. And so, you know, there may be patterns that were learned early on through the family of origin. And sometimes you can track those patterns and go back many generations. Sometimes there's information in the field um, that to me feels like it has sort of a, a elements of feeling like it's in past life stuff. And, and, and how I think I, I become aware of that is that when I would start to do these past life regression processes with people, I had a couple experiences where I would get the visuals um, of the scene that they were describing without, you know, obviously I wasn't seeing what they were seeing after the session. I'd say, hey, in that part that you described, was there this wallpaper on the wall? And, you know, what was this, the situation? And it would be confirmed. So I started to notice that I was picking up on information in that way. Um, and, and I think that's important. And then another component that can show up and the location of patterns is ancestral. So sometimes there's learned behavior. Sometimes there's actual uh, memory in the DNA. So this is an emerging place of uh, research that's coming up and it's specifically related to ancestors or descendants of Holocaust victims. So they're finding that there are higher rates of PTSD in certain populations. And if you think about you know, the, the global experience of trauma and war and genocide and famine and the whole long list. You know, we all probably have a library of trauma potentially that's in our, our DNA memory banks, right? Um, and that component of or aspect of this work is particularly profound because the idea is that that's potentially shifting the pattern upstream and downstream. Okay, so Eileen likes to call that energetics, but um, that, that the work you do as an individual that has its roots in an ancestral pattern has very broad and big implications. And I've, I've noticed um, and really felt into the potential of this work in a broader context when I worked with, you know, folks in, for where their ancestors are from different parts of the world. And noticed when certain patterns to me feel untouched, like they that kind of ancestral healing has never happened, and um, and it's just very profound to kind of notice that. I always want to acknowledge that people have shown up with a play, in a place of courage to do that because I think that it it really is a courageous act to go deep within your own healing and to recognize that what you're experiencing is, is actually much bigger than what's showing up in the immediate for you. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's been something, like that's been an additional learning and sort of aha for me in doing energy work is that, you know, we're so much more than just this body here and now, right? We got so much from our parents on both sides that they got from their parents' parents. And it's amazing that we can do that healing work across all these generations when we just are curious and we're willing just to hold space for that and for what we're experiencing and just allow what wants to be healed or what wants to show up, we just allow it to just do its thing and express itself. And it's amazing how the healing can go forwards and backwards. It's just, it blows my mind all the time. I love it. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so Andrew has so graciously donated a tuning session for us, you guys. Um, so I'll let him explain a little bit about that and how uh, the project worked. And uh, we'll include the link to the YouTube link um, down below in the comments. But share with me the project and uh, how you do that and how, you know, you can tune this project, um, you know, earlier in the week and how I can listen to it like six months from now and it still will do something for me. Yeah, yeah. So um, effectively, the link that we're going to share is a is a, a a group tuning formatted within the idea of a project or intention. Okay. So um, you know when when Eileen was developing this, I think she was um, someone you know asked her if it could be done remotely, and she believed that it couldn't. And then she did it. And then, it, and then there were results, right? She, she was able to pick up information from an individual that was not physically there. And so um, 
when we learn this process, um, there's sort of an invitation to explore doing it remotely. So um, to, I think most tuners surprise and happy, happily surprised that this can actually happen at a distance. So the idea is that um, we're connecting, or this is kind of my interpretation, the, the, this, these bio photons that exist in the plasma field are interacting with the ether. The ether is non-linear, non-local, and it functions or interacts in the same way that if people are doing distance Reiki or Qigong or things like that, that our intention um, is connecting and transmitting energy flow. Okay, um, and looking a little deeper, there's actually a word um, for that um, that's related to traditional Chinese medicine, and it's called the, the intention of the practitioner, which I found really interesting. So that's kind of a broader context of how this is working. But um, when, I, when I first started out, I experimented with doing group work in person. And so that's where there'd be, you know, 20 people um, on yoga mats in a studio, and I would have stones laid out representing those chakras and interact with those. So the idea is that I'm keying into the collective signal and that people are receiving it individually. So in contrast to a one-on-one -on -one session, I don't know who, what belongs to whom, and I don't really need to know. The idea is that, that it's moving. You know, it's um, less, of, well, it may feel like a reading, um, I always try to really stress that this is way more about the energy moving than my accuracy of what's in your field. And I think that's a really important thing to identify. But so in those group sessions, you know, really interesting things would show up and pretty consistently, just out of curiosity, I'd ask everyone in the room after the session who noticed energy move. And usually everyone's hands went up. So that was a pretty good feedback loop for me that, okay, some, you know, I think as practitioners working in a modality that's emerging, we're always like, it, did, did that work? You know, how did, how did that go for you? And um, so that was really good feedback. So what happened, let's see, at the beginning of, at the end of 2019, I did my first kind of pilot of a group distance session. And then I actually connected with um, the organization and offered four last year group distance sessions that were, you know, through their network. Um, so over time, I've sort of experimented with um, tuning an intention rather than using the format of the, you know, seven chakra system and things like that. It's great to do that, but um, I noticed that if I placed the intention um, in a placeholder that I could work with, um, you know, the idea of working with the four directions and then above and below to, to do that. Um, and, and that just became a much easier format because we're working with an intention. So in theory, you, you can, um, as long as your intention is there, you can do whatever you want with the consent of whomever's receiving it. So after our back and forth by email, it became clear to me that there was a really great opportunity to introduce this experience of coherence and support for people that are showing up. So I know that most of the folks that are um, connected through this network are, you know, frontline, you know, healthcare folks. But I also wanted to include educators and care, care providers and holistic practitioners. So, you know, the video that's linked is basically intended for anyone showing up in a role of service. And I know it's really broad, but I included animals and the earth in that picture because I just feel like if you are showing up outside of yourself for others, um, that's really an unrecognized, well, under-recognized role. You know, in our current paradigm, we tend to glorify acts of like outrageous courage in the form of protection and, and you know, uh, violence in some ways, you know, and I'm good. I think we got enough of that. I think, I think it's time to, to really balance that picture out and support the other side of the picture because without the support of people's basic needs and healthcare and nurturing, we don't have much of a, a species going on here. 
And I think it's important to acknowledge that. So the link that we're going to offer in there is that that video on YouTube. Um, I'm going to encourage folks to share that broadly. You know, my one of my personal goals at this point in my journey is that I would like to uh, connect with as many people as possible. That um, that's just kind of where my 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 values are at this point in the game. You know. I think in this last little bit, probably a lot of us have been really spending a lot of time potentially reflecting on what we do value in our lives. And, um, and that's something that's really come up for me. So um, that said, with that link and that process included, I kind of want to do a little show and tell for folks, if that's okay. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do um, – I'm just going to connect with the earth star of everyone's included. Okay. So you asked me, how does that work for other people to listen to it later? That's what we want to acknowledge. Okay. So because this is um, happening in the ether that's outside of time and space, because as the practitioner, I am holding the intention that anyone that will ever listen to it is included, which is kind of interesting. But if you're familiar with Reiki, that can be sent back and forward in time. It, it's all about that energy and intent. So uh, you could think about it like this um, as well. When someone creates a piece of music or writes a book or creates a sculpture or a painting, their energy and intention were activated in that moment that they created it. However, you are listening to it centuries later, potentially viewing it centuries later, reading it centuries later, and you in that moment can be having a palpable, significant, energetic response to their intention. And that's exactly the same thing. So that's just a really, really direct way to kind of explain that to people because it's not, you know, it's outside of our, our, what we're taught usually, yeah, you know, that crazy. everything's that's a great explanation. I never thought of it that way, but that makes sense to like to my brain, you know, like I understand how the energy works, you know, now with everything being in the ether, but for somebody who's new to this, that's a fantastic explanation. So thank you for that. Good. Yeah. All right. So um, just really briefly, I'm just going to kind of do a little show and tell. This is a, um, a weighted fork. And um, the frequency of this fork is 144. So this is put out by the biofield tuning team here. And um, it's the 144, right, is 12 times 12. So there are a lot of different reasonings for specific um, frequencies to be used. Um, this is uh, weighted forks are often used on the body because they, they have a very, um, uh, they produce a, a frequency that's detectable on a physical level, right? Um, but these also you're used in the fields, in the field around the body as well. Um, and they, they work really well to break up kind of dense information. And then this is an unweighted fork. So I'll be using this um, and you'll hear it. I think I'll be working with both of these um, today to just do our thing together. And so um, just to let everyone know, part of the process of biofield tuning includes deep, full breaths. So as we do this, as you're listening to it, like first off, um, just acknowledge a couple on a few contraindications. You know, we're doing this in, in a recording and I don't think that it has the same kind of weight that if you were in person or in a distance session, but um, we, we need to let everyone know that if you're a woman who's pregnant, you have a pacemaker or you have a chronic um, health condition, including cancer, that this part of the process and the recording is not included for you, okay? Um, we wanna make sure that everyone's safe. You know, this is a really non-invasive sort of process, but it's important for me to make sure that, you know, we're including the, you know, the ethic of do no harm. So that's just important to become aware of. Um, and then, we're gonna just connect. Okay, so I'm gonna invite everyone to just get really comfy in your space, whatever's going on. And um, we're gonna meet this earth star where it's at in everyone's field. And then, and I'm just gonna kind of notice what's there and talk you through it, all right? So first off, everybody, let's just breathe. There you go. And just kind of notice what's going on. 
without judgment, just kind of being present in your body. Okay, so here we go, folks. So what I'm noticing in the collective is, um, and sometimes I'll hear information as words, but I'm hearing, is this okay? Am I okay? Uh, this sort of a self-awareness of is, is what I'm feeling, noticing, and becoming aware of is okay. And I'd like to witness for you that whatever is going on in your space is okay. That you're okay no matter what. Yeah. And it's funny what showed up in the group session periodically is showing up here. There's all kinds of emotion in the throat. So, folks, if you are needing to communicate different things to different people, that's appropriate. You got to let it out. You know, it's, 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 uh, you, you're not required to hold that in forever. It's okay to blow off that steam and let those emotions move. So if you're hearing me breathe, you just might want to breathe and settle in. And before we drop this in, there's one little path, a little piece of info. And again, this kind of echoes what was in that group session. Um, if you're taking inventory of your life and noticing that it's time to uh, shift things and release things that have been hanging out for a long time. I just want to witness for you that um, you can manage that in grace and to honor your knowing around when that needs to happen. Sometimes just acknowledging something's inevitable can release the pressure in the moment. There you go. And then uh, it's funny, uh, knees and feet are showing up. So if you're someone on your knee, on your feet a lot, and it's time for um, some massage or some kind of um, analgesic to address some of that inflammation in those feet and knees. There we go. Okay, folks. So we're just going to slowly drop this down. You don't need to do anything. And you might notice sensations in your body or not, and that's okay. So folks, this just got very quiet and kind of heavy moving into the Earth Star. And uh, um, I'm gonna actually go in here with the 144. Um, folks, I'm just getting all of you that are listening are um, have witnessed a lot of uh, death. So um, I'm gonna invite you to breathe through that and just kind of notice that that's part of your role and to notice that that might have a cumulative kind of effect. And to be conscious to fully engage living and life and being connected to energy beyond that or in addition to. There you go. There you go. And also notice that beyond just letting the energy move through your body into the earth, there's also a pathway to receive vitality and energy from the earth.
There we go. Okay, we're going to use a 528, folks, just to finish this off. It just needs a little, little smoothing over. The 528 frequency is associated with um, restoring biological organisms to their original blueprint and um, has a quality of, of affecting the DNA of organisms. So here we go. Nice. Okay, folks, that feels great. So that's that's kind of the process of an Earth Star. You know, it's interesting towards the end there. Um, when I work with folks, I know that I've kind of anchored the Earth Star in pretty well because I can sense the individual's pineal gland a little bit. And we, we were, I was feeling that towards the end. Um, you know, folks, make sure that you're able to support your sleep as much as possible right now. There's, there's a, there's a, when you're showing up in that uh, elevated state of awareness and having some adrenal workouts on the regular, um, down regulating and uh, creating space for your own biology to down regulate, I think is important as well. So if you are in using melatonin, for those of you that are, um, just know that your body has the potential to produce that ideally on its own and that you might want to consider supporting your pineal gland so it's able to do that. That I don't know why that's dropping in. I just had to say that to somebody. I love your little drop-ins. I think they're amazing. And uh, yeah, like I just, you know, I take it all and I just see how it resonates and um, I just, I'm so grateful for you and what you do and being here today. Thank you so much. Um, how can people find you if they want to uh, book in for a one-on-one -on -one session with you? Yeah, thanks for asking. So um, we're in the in the, the box here in the information. Um, I, hopefully you'll include my website. It's andrewmapplerath.com. Um, that's kind of a mouthful, but there, you're gonna see the modalities I work with and you can go ahead and click biofield tuning and you can go ahead and book yourself there um, for those. Um, you know, I'm on the East Coast right now. So um, if the times that are available uh, don't work for you, just send me a note by e email and then we'll, we'll try to make something work for that. Uh, you know, the amazing part of, about this is that I've worked with folks internationally at a distance. And um, that has just been such a gift in this little episode that we've been in that I've been able to do that. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm always delighted um, how people find me and you know the, the outcomes for people that show up. You know, I, I, I just wanna say that, you know, my, my interest to this work is that it has such a significant outcome for people, even though it's working on a subtle level. And, um, and I'm, when I receive the work, I'm always sort of blown away. I'm always blown away at how much comes up and how much shifts in the response. Sometimes people feel things and sometimes people don't. You know, I have clients that don't feel things in their body so much, but they're like, you know what? After a session, I'm always, this stuff always changes. And the idea is that when we're able to shift our signal, because on some levels we're all signal generators, that when that flow entrains to the world around us, that um, new things show up. It's like we're all in a state of a feedback loop. So if I'm running a story where I don't have enough or I'm not good enough, then the world's gonna meet me in that place. But if I'm able to shift that frequency on the inside, new outcomes show up. And so I'm gonna invite everyone to imagine yourself as a signal generator. And that if we can help you tune that signal generator to a place of coherence, then you are able to emit more light, you become more resonant, more resilient, 
And then the way that whatever shows up in your world, um, if your resonance and your charge is significant enough, it doesn't have that same impact that if you're running on, you know, 30%, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't allow your phone to hang out at 30%. Why are you letting your body do it? So anyway, I just kind of went off there, but yeah, yeah, that's my, that's my spiel there. All right. Amazing. Well, thank you so much again, Andrew. It was lovely chatting and seeing you face to face today. And yes. uh, yeah, hopefully everybody can reach out and connect with Andrew. So yes. take care, everybody, and we will see you all soon.